Hello everybody, I'm Zach Peterson and I'm here talking to you today about one of the new features in Flux. And today we're going to be talking about copper fills. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use copper fills in your Flux projects. Now, copper fills are just like any other object in Flux. You can assign design rules and as you work with them in the PCB editor, the editor is automatically going to update to apply those design rules to your fill. So your fill is always going to be designed exactly the way you want it. So jump into one of your own projects and follow along as I show you how to work with the new Copper Fills feature in Flux. So to get started using Copper Fills in your PCB in Flux, first thing you need to do is of course open up a PCB project. So here on the screen I have a project that I've opened up and I'm inside of the schematics. And before we get into the PCB layout, there is something important that you need to do here. In order to uh, enable the fills, what you need to do is actually place a ground symbol in the schematics. So you can see I have one here, and then I have one here. So we need to have those ground symbols placed in order for the fill to be enabled. Now, in order for the fill to actually touch one of these pins, we have to actually attach a ground connection to it. So that's also very important because in some cases, maybe we don't want the fill to actually touch one of those pins. That's okay. You can actually just have that connection made with a trace if you want. Now, when we get into the PCB layout, in order to activate fills or uh, make sure that they're visible, um, all that we need to do is to just go over here to the, to the layers panel, and then you'll see here these uh, teardrop symbols. All you have to do is toggle one of these and then you will see that everything in the PCB layout is now filled in with copper. So if the ground uh, symbol touches that pin or if it's assigned to the ground net, you can then see here that copper has now touched that particular pin uh, on that component and everything is filled in with copper. Now you'll notice that each of these symbols is assigned to each layer. So if I want, I can then just kind of scroll through each layer and I can enable or disable the fill as I want to um, in each of these layers. So it's available on all layers. So you'll notice here on J1 on pin four that it is actually touching the fill on all layers. So you can just see that here because um, there's no space around this pin as we scan through each of the layers. I have all the components located on the top layer. And something that's important to note is that um, while the fill is enabled, if I then try to route it's actually gonna be able to just kind of route through the fill. And then once I finish the route, the fill is gonna regenerate so that we now have uh, the clearance applied around this trace. So same thing with this one. If I just route this up here, you see the same kind of thing. It'll just regenerate the fill. And now um, that connection is already made uh, between this capacitor and this pad, and it leaves the clearance around that trace. When you're inside the uh, PCB layout and you continue to complete these routes, it's uh, gonna just keep adjusting the fill um, as you complete this board and it'll keep applying that clearance. It'll also adjust any other design rules that you've defined for this fill. And we'll get into the design rules in just a moment. Now, if we inspect the inner layers, we see the same thing. And in fact, this inner layer um, spans all the way across below all of the components. Um, same thing here on mid layer one. So mid layer one is kind of like a ground plane now uh, for all of the components on the top layer and all of the signals on the top layer. Now, the next thing we need to talk about when dealing with copper fills is stitching vias. So stitching vias are used to make multiple connections between the grounded copper fills that you have on different layers in the PCB. So you'll notice here, if we look at this PCB layout, that um, if I were to, let's say, enable the fill on the bottom layer and then turn off the fill on the top layer, that the only connection between uh, the top layer and the bottom layer fills would occur through these two pins. And that can be problematic with digital designs because then that uh, return current that is created from a digital signal may have to follow a very large loop inductance path in order to form a complete circuit in this design. So it's actually desirable to make multiple connections between these fills on these different layers. So stitching vias are the tools that you use to do that. So if I go over here to ground, 
this is where I would then be able to add in some object specific rules that will apply specifically to this fill. Now you'll notice here if I click on fill, you see that it is going to inherit the rules from its parent object, which is in this case, the ground object. So if I just click add, it's gonna open up the add layout rule. And then you'll see here two important uh, design rules. We have the fill stitching density. So I'm gonna add that. And then I'm also going to add in the fill stitching offset. So the fill stitching density tells you the distance between vias that make up your stitching vias. So in order to auto populate those stitching vias, you just need to enter in a distance for the fill stitching density. And this is gonna be the pitch between the vias. So as soon as I enter this, you'll see that it auto populates with all of these vias and they're all separated by two millimeters. That's pretty convenient. There's also the fill stitching offset rule, and that rule is going to space out these rows and offset them by a specific distance. So you can play with the shape or the distribution of your uh, stitching via arrangement um, just by messing with the fill stitching offset. So as you play with the fill stitching offset, um, you're gonna be able to say, turn this square pattern, which is set by default, uh, into a diamond pattern if you like, or any other kind of pattern um, that you can imagine just by playing with these two values. So just as an example with the fill stitching offset value, if I put in a value of let's say one millimeter, you'll see that the stitching offset changes a bit. And if I want to, I can then, of course, you know, let's say change this to, I don't know, three millimeters, let's say. And so as, as we change this, the arrangement is gonna change. One thing that we can also do is to have the density be in two dimensions. So for example, we can change this to have X values and Y values as I've shown here. And you'll notice when I updated this, it actually spaced these out in different amounts. Um, we can do the same thing with the fill stitching offset. Let's say three millimeters and two millimeters. When we do that, um, it's going to offset them by different amounts. And so in kind of a complex layout like this, what you'll see is that it's going to allow you to toggle where those stitching vias are automatically generated and um, they will fill in automatically, but they're not going to touch any of the components. So the rules engine is very good about keeping those uh, stitching vias away from components and traces. Now you'll notice with little islands like this, if one of these little islands does not correspond to a position for one of these uh, stitching vias, then it won't get filled in here because uh, the uh, keep, keeping track of the clearance rules and ensuring that we don't have a clearance violation actually takes priority in placement of those stitching vias. So the result is that you may have some of these islands left over. What you can then do is just place a via and connect it to ground right here or right here. And in doing that, you will then ensure that this uh, top copper fill then gets connected to the other copper fills in your other layers. Now, what you can actually do is you can just intentionally place a via and uh, it will make that connection for you. So I'll just show you an example right here. Um, for this bottom copper. So of course, make sure that you select the net and go in here, add via, and then it will get placed right there. Um, of course, you know, normally if you had a via here anyways, and you route this over and make this connection, that'll clear up that net connection. Um, then once you go back and enable fills, um, then it will connect to that via and um, you now have this island on the top layer connected to this uh, pore on the bottom layer. Um, here with these other two islands, uh, we could do the same. Typically with this small island, we would wanna just put a via here intentionally. Um, this is a really thin piece of copper here between these two components. Um, we could also put a, a via right here intentionally just to ensure that there's always a good connection back to ground. So next, there's one more design rule that we need to consider in working with copper fills in flux. And there is one design rule that will allow you to totally remove fills from certain layers or to, in other words, only enable fills on certain layers. So to do that, we just go over to ground and click edit and we need to add in a new design rule. That design rule is the connected layers rule. 
And once we select that design rule, what we can do is we can then select specific layers where we only want the fill to appear. So by default, as we saw in this layer stack menu, um, the fill will be enabled by default in all layers. So the all option is default. However, if we want, we can just enable, let's say the fill on these two mid layers, for example. And so now in doing that, you can see here that I've essentially created two ground planes in this four layer stack up. So here on layer two, and then here on layer three. So it's hidden behind layer two at the moment, but um, it's there. So this allows you to control where those copper fills are placed. So this is really important because there is a design guideline out there that states that you should always fill in every layer with a uh, copper fill, uh, regardless of what's on that layer after you finished your PCB layout. Now that may not be the best choice for every design and this particular design rule, the connected layers rule, is what allows you to control that and determine exactly where you want those fills to be located. Thanks everyone for taking the time to follow along with this tutorial. As the fills feature is upgraded, there will be more tutorials coming out showing you how to do things like set up arbitrarily shaped polygons, assign the fills to different nets, and things like this. Make sure also that you don't forget to use stitching vias with fills. They are very important, especially when you have fills on multiple layers. We'll see you for the next tutorial, everyone.